Have you guys ever learned or thought or heard about the, the drug epidemic going on in Afghanistan after the U.S. withdrew forces? We all have an understanding that obviously opium is a big deal. Afghanistan produces 80% of the opium. So what has gone on after the U.S. have withdrawn? What is the deal with that? This is significant. The U.S. obviously has a drug epidemic. A lot of that comes from Afghanistan. Heroin, etc., comes from opium, and Afghanistan produces 80% of the opium. So let's understand what's going on in Afghanistan, understand how this is going to affect the drug epidemic going on in the U.S. Very wordy. I think you guys get the point. If this is a new video, sources in the description box below, or if I just add this into the previous podcast, we'll see. Okay, so this has international and humanitarian implications is what I'm really trying to say here. Now, I'm going to read you, first of all, I'm going to read you this. This is from Al Jazeera. I'll read you this article, and then I'm going to get into the very depth of the situation. This is kind of a taking off point for me. According to the Taliban, 4 million people are addicted to drugs, though some local folks, sorry, this is my side commentary, some local folks say it's more like a third. The, the quote-unquote drug users think it's anecdotally probably more of a third of the country. So 4 million people out of a 4D million people population, I would not believe the Taliban in any way, shape, or form, but that is significant because 4 million people of the Taliban saying that, it's probably way, way, way worse of a situation. This is where we get into some bad stuff. Did you know 61% majority, strong majority, 61% of the Afghanistan economy is reliant on agriculture, 61. Of that 61%, the majority, 29% of agriculture is reliant on opium, 29%. Around 2007, the US had this idea of combating opium because that will combat the Taliban because they, they used opium for money, not realizing that Karzai administration themselves got in trouble for trafficking opium themselves. So that is an issue that affected everybody, not just the Taliban. Since the U.S. tried to combat this, the U.S. tried to create other crops, such as pomegranates, everything failed abysmally. The Taliban has a historically is against the use of, or the creation of, of opium, yet they can't really do anything about it. Why am I mentioning this? Well, because one of the situations that we're presented with is the fact that opium is used to support families as a result of the fact that the United Nations and the international community, especially the U.S., has withdrawn aid that is being used, that was used in Afghanistan. They said because of the treatment of women. They're not going to give the Taliban money. Well, here's the thing. Who's affected the most from a drug epidemic if you're thinking in terms of poverty? Is it going to be in a, in a and I don't mean a social justice term, if we're talking about a patri patriarchal society, do you think the men are going to be trashed first, or do you think poverty is going to affect the women first? The women usually receive the brunt of the situation in countries like this. So if we're caring about the treatment of women, do you think the head of the Taliban, they're going to be affected most by the, the cutting of aid, or do you think they're going to eat and be fully fed? Well, I mean, hey, based off the aesthetics of some of these folks, I'm not making any fat shaming jokes, but if we're looking at the way that they're built in comparison to the people, they're probably going to be fine. The sanctions, though, are probably going to hurt the average person. Probably the women who, you know, while we're concerned about going to them going to school, which is incredibly important, it might not be as important to them as, say, eating. So what is my point here? Perhaps it would be a good idea to increase aid back to Afghanistan so they could rely less on opium, just by example. 